Sometimes learners struggle with this question, when do we use relative speed? So they do know how to use it. For example, if two objects are moving in the uh, opposite directions, then the relative speed is the sum of their speeds. Or when they are moving in the same direction, then the relative speed is the difference of their speeds. But the point is that in which cases do we actually use the concept, right? So we'll have a quick discussion on that today. So these are the cases when we use relative speed, when objects are moving towards each other for the same amount of time and they cover some distance together. All right. So what does this mean? Let's say we have two objects with a distance of, say, 20 meters between them. And let's say we have an object A over here and we have object B over here, the speed here is two meters per second and the speed of B is three meters per second. Let's say they are standing still, A and B are standing still and distance between them is 20 meters. Now, if both A and B at the same time start moving towards each other, let's say at exact 12, they start moving towards each other at their own respective speeds and they keep moving till the time they meet at some point over here. Then we have to use the concept of relative speed. Why is that? That is we add their speeds. And why is that? Think about it. Now, at what rate are they covering the distance of 20 meters that is between them? A is covering 2 meters every second and at the same time, B is covering 3 meters in that same second. So then together, they are covering a total of 5 meters in every second. And that is why we have to add their speeds. And this is nothing but what? This is just the relative speed. And that is why we say that the time taken to meet is going to be 20 upon 5. Right? because they are both moving simultaneously. So they are covering more distance than whatever their individual speeds are. Hence, their speeds get added. Now, for example, think about it. What happens if, say, B is static, B is not moving, B stays over here only, and A starts moving towards B. Say A moves on and on and on, B is not moving. Let's say after five seconds, B also starts moving. Then can we use relative speed? Well, we cannot use relative speed to begin with. That is initially we know that only A is moving. So A is moving for the first five seconds and in these five seconds, it covers a distance of two meters per second, which means that first A covers a distance of 10 meters alone. We are not using relative speed over here. But once A is over here, now A continues to move and B also starts moving. So now together they are again covering a distance of five meters per second in every second. They're covering a distance of five meters every second, which means that the rest of the 10 meters, they'll cover in another two seconds. So then let's say if A started at exact 12, then they will meet somewhere here in seven seconds. First five seconds, A moves alone. We cannot use relative speed over there. B is not moving. But once A covers a certain distance and B also starts moving at that time, then we use the concept of relative speed. And till the time they meet over here, then both of them are moving continuously together, simultaneously, right? So that is why we can use the concept of relative speed. Now, when objects moving away from each other for the same amount of time cover some distance between them. So now, for example, let's say A and B are both standing over here. Right now, let's say A starts moving in this direction at 2 meters per second and B starts moving at the same time in this direction at 3 meters per second. So they are covering a distance of 5 meters. What happens in one second? B is over here and A is over here, 
Right? So they have a distance of five meters between them. That is the sum of their speeds. So let's say if we are asked that in how in, in let's say four seconds, what will be the distance between them? Now, since they're covering five meters together every second, so then in four seconds, the distance they would have covered would be 20 meters. So then B would have reached somewhere here and A would have reached somewhere here. And that is why the distance between A and B at this time is going to be 20 meters. All right, now think about the same thing uh, as before. Let's say if I have A here and B here, and let's say A starts moving and uh, say keeps moving for the first five seconds and B is static, B does not move, B stays here only. Then in five, and then after five seconds, B starts moving in the opposite direction. Then what is the distance, let's say, that they would have covered in 10 seconds? Okay, so for the first five seconds, only A is moving. So A keeps moving. There is no concept of relative speed involved as of now. And A covers a distance of 10 meters because A's speed is 2 meters per second. So in five seconds, it covers a distance of 10 meters. Now the distance between A and B is 10 meters. Now B also starts moving in the opposite direction and A continues to move in his own direction. Now in each second, the two of them are creating a distance of five meters between them. So in another five seconds, they would have created a distance of what? Five into five. That is equal to 25 meters between them. Hence the distance between them after 10 seconds is going to be what is going to be the 10 meters that A covered alone when we did not use relative speed plus the 25 meters that they both covered together when we use the concept of relative speed. That is a total of 35 meters. Now let's take a look at this official question. It seems complicated, but uh, frankly, it's quite simple. Just go through it once, pause the video over here, and solve it on your own and then restart the video. So Al and Ben are, are drivers for SD Trucking Company. So we have SD over here and there are two people. One is Al and the other is Ben. And um, Ben left SD at 8 a.m. heading east. So then Ben starts going in the east direction. And Al left SD at 11 a.m. So Ben starts at 8 a.m. And Ben is the only one traveling for three hours. And then Al starts at 11 a.m. So then let's say this is where Ben reaches at 11 a.m. How much is the distance that Ben covers in these three hours? It depends on the speed of Ben. Now, um, now at a particular time later that day, the dispatcher retrieved data from SD's vehicle tracking system. And the data showed that up to that time, Al had averaged 40 miles per hour. So Al's speed is 40 miles per hour average speed. And Ben had averaged 20 miles per hour. So Ben's speed is 20 miles per hour. It also showed that Al and Ben had driven a combined total of 240 miles. So at some point, I don't know, Al is somewhere here, let's say. And Ben is somewhere here at some time. Uh, of course, after 11 o'clock. And the distance between the two of them at this time is 240 miles. We can solve it without worrying about relative speed. Um, let's look at how and then we look at how to solve it using relative speed. So um, Ben traveled for three hours at 20 miles per hour and then traveled another, we don't know how many, let's say T hours. Al traveled a total of T hours. Mm -hmm. So then let's say the distance covered by Ben, that is going to be T plus 3 into the speed of Ben, which is 20, plus the Al's distance, the distance that Al would have covered is 40 T. Because after 11 o'clock, they are both traveling for T hours. So then this total distance we know is given by 240. So this is how we can get the value of T over here. We get T is equal to 3. So that means after 11 o'clock, the two of them travel for another 3 hours. Yeah, so then another 3 hours after 11 o'clock is 2 p.m. So 
the dispatcher retrieved the data from the vehicle tracking system at what time at 2 p.m. All right. Now we can also think of solving it uh, using relative speed. So for the first three hours, Ben was the only one traveling and his average speed is 20 miles per hour. So let's say he covered a distance of 60 miles. So the distance between them has become 60 miles. The total distance covered by them is 240 miles, which means that Al and Ben together covered 180 miles in some time. Together, at, for the they traveled for the same amount of time. And in this time, they covered a distance of 180 miles. The first 60 miles were covered only by Ben alone. So what is their relative speed? Since they are moving in opposite directions, their relative speed is the sum of their speeds, which is 20 plus 40. So their relative speed is 20 plus 40 miles per hour. And then the time taken for them to cover these 180 miles, time taken is going to be equal to the distance, the distance that they covered together 180 upon 60, their relative speed, that is equal to three hours. So then after 11 o'clock, they took another three hours. And that is why we again come to 2 p.m. Of course, relative speed helps you uh, eliminate the use of variables. Another scenario in which we use relative speed is when objects are moving in the same direction for the same amount of time. So, for example, let's say we have A and B over here and they both start moving A at 2 meters per second and B at 3 meters per second. And they both start at the same time. So, let's say at exact 12, they both start moving. What happens after one second? B has covered 3 meters while A has covered 2 meters. So B is 1 meter ahead of A. In the next second, B has covered 6 meters total. That is uh, three meter, another 3 meters. And A has covered another 2 meters. So now B is 2 meters ahead of A. And hence, every second... B is going to be one extra meter ahead of A, which means that B's relative speed with respect to A is only one meter per second. That means that B is going to cover one meter extra as compared to A in every second. Now, uh, in, in uh, two objects moving in the same direction, a more the more common case is when the slower one starts first, covers some distance, and then the faster one has to catch up. So your questions are usually based on that. So what do we mean by that? We mean that, let's say, A starts traveling, B is still over here only, and A starts to cover some distance at uh, his own speed of 2 meters per second, and let's say he does so for 6 seconds. In 6 seconds... The distance that A would have covered, this one is going to be 12 meters. Now, after 6 seconds, let's say at 12, 0, 0, at 06. After 6 seconds, now B starts moving as well. And now B has to over meet A. Look, A is continuously moving. A is still moving here. Now, B has to meet A. B has to be faster than A to meet A, right, to overtake A. So then this, the question often is that when, at what time, after how many seconds or minutes, whatever, will B overtake A? That is when A will be here, then B would also be here, and then finally B would be ahead of A. Okay? So in these uh, questions, relative speed is very, very useful. Now, Think about it. At 12.0006, that is in 6 seconds, A has covered 12 meters. Now, when B starts, B has to cover whatever distance A is covering and it has to cover an extra 12 meters as well. So, now we use the concept of relative speed because A is also moving and B is also moving. They are both moving in the same direction. So then the relative speed between them is the difference of their speeds, which is one meter per second. 
So B is going to cover an extra 1 meter every second. So to cover the 12 meters of extra distance between them, right? The extra distance between them is 12. And to cover this, the speed of B, the relative speed is 1, which means that in 12 seconds, B will overtake A. These are usually the cases in which relative speed is used. Always remember, we'll use relative speed when both are moving for the same amount of time. Let's look at another official question, a good one, though simple one. So Maria left home. Uh, okay, let's give you, um, just pause the video over here and then restart once you're done. So Maria left home one fourth of an hour after her husband. So what we have is that here is the home. Here is uh, the husband and here is Maria. So the husband leaves home, is traveling for 15 minutes, one fourth of an hour. And then Maria starts traveling. Right? So for 15 minutes, only the husband is traveling and has reached somewhere over here, let's say. So, um, and drove over the same route as he had in order to overtake him. Now, from the time she left, so from the time Maria left, that is after 15 minutes, Maria left after 15 minutes, how many hours did it take Maria to overtake her husband? So now Maria has to cover this extra distance that her husband covered in 15 minutes, in one fourth of an hour. Okay. Maria drove 60 miles before overtaking her husband. So what we do know is that the husband kept traveling, then Maria kept traveling, and the total distance that Maria covered, that means this distance is 60 miles. So, of course, the distance covered by the husband in 15 minutes was less than 60 miles, but what was it exactly? We don't know. Yeah. If we are using only statement one, we cannot say that from uh, you know how much for how much time did Maria travel, because we know the distance she traveled, but we don't know what her speed is. So that is why we cannot say for how long she traveled. That means this statement alone is not sufficient. Now we ignore statement one. Now we do not know the 60 miles, right? Now we don't know how much distance she covered. While overtaking her husband, Maria drove at an average rate of 60 miles per hour. So we know that her speed is 60 miles per hour which was 12 miles per hour faster than her husband's average speed, which means husband's average speed was in 48 miles per hour. Mm -hmm. And that gives us that the relative speed of Maria is what the difference of the two speeds because they're moving in the same direction, which is 12 miles per hour. Now, in one fourth of an hour, in 15 minutes, how much distance did the husband cover? The husband's speed is 48 miles per hour. The distance covered is going to be equal to speed into time, which is equal to 48 into one fourth of an hour, which is 12 miles. Which means that the husband covered 12 miles in this time in 15 minutes. So now Maria with her relative speed, has to cover an extra distance of 12 miles. So that means the time taken will be equal to 12 miles, the distance, extra distance divided by the relative speed, which we know is 12 miles per hour. So upon 12, which is equal to one hour. This means that in one hour, Maria will catch up with her husband, right? And that is why our statement two alone is sufficient. Look, it's an easy C question where they try to trap you by giving you some uh, interesting information in the first statement. And when you combine it with the second one, you feel that the answer is right there, right? But it is too easy then. You need to ignore statement one completely and evaluate statement two on its own to figure out that in fact, statement two alone is sufficient. And that is why the answer over here is B.